thinking about the number of people who were lost across Southeast Asia, it's, it's pretty staggering. For a and year, Chris Nicholson and the School of Human Evolution and Social Change at ASU have been working to name unidentified service members using digital archaeology. Typically, incidents related to aircraft, you know, it's, you never know where these things are going to occur. We focused on Cambodia because they had a pretty good understanding of the existing cases that they had and the literature that was associated with that. They're using data from the Department of Defense on crash sites, artificial intelligence, and geographic information systems to map out where soldier remains could be. The map includes areas of high, medium, and low probability of recovering a missing service personnel. They consider all kinds of variables, like vegetation and climate, examining the likelihood of decaying. Also, we're looking at things like soil type, soils that maybe are more acidic, maybe are less conducive to the preservation of information. Uh, elevation is an important one too. How it was the, the incident take place in the mountains or down low? Is it easier or hard to get to an area? The mission is to give that information to people searching on the ground, giving them a better idea of where to look, narrowing down the search. The fact that they're still able to do these missions and go in and try to bring closer to these families is fantastic. Nicholson says their work is just beginning. A lot of people don't think about archaeology providing some sort of public benefit like this. A lot of times people think of archaeologists working in the distant past. I don't know. So far, they haven't been able to identify any service members, but Nicholson said they hope to further refine and develop this data, eventually moving to other parts of Southeast Asia. Reporting in the newsroom, Alexis Dominguez for Arizona's Family.